Wow people, I'm going to try and kill two birds with one stone today. I want to try and get rid of a bit of uh, vegetation and old branches that come down in recent storms. And I'm going to try and make myself, I don't even know if I can, a T-bar discorger which works either pushing or pulling. And I've got a piece of metal here which was basically from a uh, plug spanner. Anybody knows what a plug spanner is? A cylinder goes over the plugs. And that was one loop and it used to come down here up and like that, so it's like a big U. I've managed to straighten it in the vise. I've sanded it off as best I can because it had rust on it. I've got the fire going, but I've got to, I don't know how hot I can get it. Obviously, I'm probably never going to get this red hot, but I'm hoping I might be able to soften it enough. Using Mike's vise, I've got a huge, great big uh, piece of uh, horse chestnut over there, which is pretty hard. I'm going to try and uh, fix his vise to that and see if I can't soften this enough to make a flat sort of spoon shaped flat end to it, almost like a rounded table knife so I can then drill it and uh, cut it out. The well, first job, keep warm obviously, middle of winter, uh, try and see how hot I can get this. I brought with me, got to let it burn down first. The only thing you would do normally, you'd, obviously you'd have a furnace wouldn't you, and I can't, you know, I can't go and buy a furnace for what I'm trying. I just want to soften the metal, but you would normally force oxygen into a furnace to get it really absolutely red hot. Um, I'm just going to try with the bellows here, as you can see. But I've got to wait for those coals to burn down, apply a second load on there, and then hopefully get hot enough and I might just get a little while. In fact, there's no reason why I can't put it in there. And I'm going to be doing that with, yes, leather gloves and a mole grip. That's got that locked in there. And lay this in so it starts to heat up anyway. Right over here, I'm going to put Mike's uh, miniature baby anvil on there so it takes some shock and just see if I can get that flat. First, I've got to screw it down. I'm starting to get a bit of a, a base to the ash layer now. I've opened the, I have a circular one here because I can drop these blocks down and get a bit of oxygen flow whichever way the wind's blowing. So I've got these two opened out to the side because the wind is coming south-southwest today, probably back in middle of southerly, I don't know. But it's sort of going through there, so it, it's almost like a little miniature oxygen channel going in there. So, wait until the mole. Oh no, hang on, people. <laughs> There's colour. I have colour as oh, well. I know from uh, metal working at school, bodging up, that that's getting hot there with a colour change there. Now, I'm not going to get it red hot, I feel sure, but I might actually get it soft enough just to take a bit of a, a bash with the hammer. So once this burns up, that might even get red hot and I can't see it and that's the truth of it. So I'm trying to get as much heat in there as I can and then I'm going to try it right now with the bellows.
I'm going to put the gloves on just so I don't know how hot those mole grips are going to be. Now, here goes. Right, out we come. Loosen the screws, but as you can see, just starting to make it a bit flat, so I need to get hotter. Well, at this stage, the metal workers amongst you would probably think he doesn't really know what he's doing, and I'm experimenting, that is what it's about. This little anvil obviously does work. It is flattening. If I got that red hot in a furnace, it would be done well, in that first batch of hits, to be honest. But what I am wondering, I've got, a, I've got it flat, one more go, and I probably will get as flat as I want. But I'm thinking the U shape I want to cut out to make this uh, sea fishing disgorger. I wonder, I've seen them to make it harder, the metal, they plunge it into some oil. I've got a little bit of oil, I've got a baked bean can. But if I do that now and I've got it flat, surely that makes it harder for me to drill. I think they call it case hardening, do they? Somebody tell us. So am I doing it the wrong way? If I flatten it first, then put it in the oil to harden it, or temper it or whatever they do, I'm going to make it harder for drilling and sawing out, surely. So what I'm going to do, flatten it again, and then go in and drill it out. And of course, if I drilled out and cut little areas there, if I flatten it again, then it should spread easier because there's less area of metal to spread. Sort of makes sense to me. I don't know about you metal workers out there. Have you still got hair in your head or have you torn it all out? Listen, it's an experiment. It's all about a learning purpose and curve. Right, I think I'll have one more bash on here because I'm enjoying it. And then um, I'll let it cool off and I think I'll let it cool naturally um, and then it might stay a bit soft, softer, I don't know and then take it in and see if I can actually cut the little shape out if I've got it flat enough, I don't know Well guys, I think that's, if you look at that, it's about as flat as I want to get it. I'm trying to visualise copying Wayne's Disgorger. I think that might do it. Right, I'm going to let this cool off here. Just put him down on the, on the wood. It doesn't burn the wood. Typical boy singing, you have to, you have to put it on something to see how hot it is. 
Let that cool off and I'll get it in the workshop. Right, I'm in the totally awesome workshop. It's cooled off. I know because I haven't burnt myself. It's still warm though. See it's flat there. Or as flat as I think I can get it. Now I've got a cut. Let me show you the shape I've got a cut. Yeah, it's basically a sort of, it's just a slot to take the hook. So I've got to allow the bend of a hook and then sort of a little U cut out on either side. So, apologies for childish drawing. There's the rod. Comes down like this and then I've got the flat piece which comes around something like this but then it goes a notch about midway here. That's the sort of shape I'm trying to achieve. Shaft of the uh, handle comes down here. I've flattened out here. Doesn't have to be rounded at the end. That's what they look like a bit. I'm not sure to take the shank of the hook and then a cutout slot this side and that side. So you can push from the top of this end and push the hook out or you can turn the line upside down and pull it the other way. First thing I need to do is put centre punches along here so that the drill when I put it on doesn't skid off. I'm going to be using a pillar drill. Now the first one, I don't know which side I go I guess, that slot's going to come in here. So I need to be about, I'm guessing, about there. So that's just basically when I put the drill there, it's not going to go skidding and skating off everywhere. I'm going to work three or four in a line. There are a few there. So it hooks about that wide. I don't need much more than that. I'll, do. I'll put another one here just in case. Right, so get in the drill, see what happens. Sometimes they make an awful screeching sound. Do I start in the middle? Got there, there's one. See how far we get. I think that looks pretty much as I should get it. I don't really want to drill, the, I, you're tempted to drill a hole here. I think I'm just going to hacksaw down into that centre hole there first. Now I need a pair of long nose pliers and I think I'm safest to try and fatigue this off and rock it. Yes, yeah, sweet. Oh, oh my god. Now, files. I recently cleaned all the workshop up here. Clean shelves, clean jars. This lockdown's driving me well beep crazy. I don't know about the rest of you. I just have a bad feeling I haven't got all the right size. I've got the I've got a perfect round one there. Hmm. I'm gonna need a small one. thing is, it's so tempting just to get this and try and snap that out, but I think I could 
snap that piece off and that's why I think I've got to try and harden this and quench it in some oil so it's really really doesn't bend out this is the way to do it I feel right got rid of the circular file now I can get the flat file in there Here we go peeps, I think that will do the job. Obviously they normally have a T here so I could maybe bend it over once. I've got a plastic handle here I could glue on. I think if I just bend it once that would give me enough to, to pull on, you know. If I can get that heated up about, come on Smith tell me. That's what they normally have it, would be quite short about there. I could bend it over short and back. I, th I think you want something around between the fingers there. So I'm just going to bend it straight over there about four inches. I might just nip this off with a hacksaw. Then it's back out to the little fire, heat it up, get it as hot as I can, and then hopefully dip it in the oil, quench it. And I'm sure, I'm sure that's what hardens the steel. Because don't forget that is now a weak point there, although I'm only pushing or pulling on that two loops at the end. This is how I quench my steel and I've learnt this today, a baked bean can and a bottle of old engine oil. I've no idea what I'm doing but it all seems good, it could be fun. There's a bit of some of the bad beers I've drunk this one. I think that's enough. Keep it away from the fire. Let's get that down there. Obviously it goes without saying. I've never done this before. So should something combust at speed and they only find my charred remains at the bottom of the garden, somebody please tell my wife, don't waste the clips. If the camera hasn't melted, get it up on YouTube. Well boys, I think it's getting near quench time. I've no idea what safety equipment you need for all this, but I think the most important part is a functioning brain. Here we go. Somebody tell me what's going to happen next. Oh, oh got my hands over my face. <laughs> well, a little bit of smouldering at the top end. It looks okay to me. So now I just want to bend a, an angle on here, going to let this cool off and then build the fire up a little bit again and try and see and get a bend, a 90 degree bend for a grip. So what I've done to give me a sort of guide on the handle, I've got a piece of coat hanger wire, measured it from where my little loops are. You know, we're gonna put my little slot, if you like, for the hook. And I've come up with sort of that, which is just a grab. Now normally you'd have a T-bar across here. I can't be bothered to go and get some, pay somebody to weld something across there. I've still got enough pulling power with one and my other two fingers around the other side. So I feel that's going to do it. So I've got about two and a half inches and when that heats up, I'll have a look, see if I can bend it at 90 degrees on this. If not, can't really do it in the vise, but I'm going to try it with the anvil first.
Well, I've got it bent 90 degrees in one go, I've got it back in the fire there. Gonna heat it up and I guess I, I drop it in to try and harden it in that position. Listen, it's gonna be some almighty sized congor shark if I'm pulling on that handle and <laughs> it comes straight and the hook doesn't come out. I'm gonna be over with the fish. So I've got one last bit, it might fit in there the end of it. I doubt it would go in that can, bean can to be honest, my quenching, quenching tank I'm calling it. Bit of fun isn't it, bit of fun. I'm quite enjoying myself. I think most boys do when they get involved with flames. So back in the workshop guys, I've got the basis of it done as you can see, but then I'm thinking they normally have a piece welded for the T-handle. Is there a way I can get some of this solid oak, peel it back and make a handle and maybe whip a T-handle on there in oak? So next phase of this little rig here is going to be trying to strip this oak off, get rid of all the tools here, put them away, see if I can peel that back and just see what it's about. Now I was told by Mike when I texted him, he said if I cut a point on that and get this red hot you can burn in there, in the wood. So I think, okay, it burns all the way in like this, fine, but I'm still only left with half a handle. I want to get the overlap to get these two fingers there, either side of it, so I've got something to pull with. So I'm figuring if I find this wood under here is good, I get a chisel. Actually I think I might have one of those chisels that's got a little scoop out of it. Cut the scoop out shape of this. It recesses in there like that and then just whip over the one side and that will give me the T-bar. it would be a nice wooden handle. That's what I'm thinking. Hey, life's one big experiment with Graham Pullen. Well, I've got it shaved off the smaller piece. I'm going to allow you can see it goes down and up there, so I've got a short piece here that's straight. I've got a slightly longer piece there. I'm trying to think of the width of my hand. I almost think that piece there was the straighter part. Now this is green oak. So Ryan, our tree surgeon, was saying this is a time to shave it because the oak is soft, so you can carve it, you can chisel it, you can shape it. Um, but what he did say about um, Oak is if I want some bigger pieces I want to keep for carving projects, something like that, workshop stuff, is on the ends, without the bark on, on the ends they put PVA glue. It's a PVA sealant, just watered down I guess, two to one, something like that, to seal it up, to retain the moisture inside there so it doesn't dry out too quickly. I'm always going to put them in the greenhouse. Mike said, no, they dry out too quickly, they'll split. So the time to carve wood apparently is when it's green like this, young, and I'm going to saw off probably there just to give me enough. We'll see how we go with it. Let's get it cut first. Well, I think I want to put a sort of a channel in there to midway about there. So this will recess in and then bind over the top of it. That makes sense. So I'm probably going to mark it. Let's put this in the vise, just like that. I'm going to crush it too hard because it's a soft wood. Get about mid distance between, there's the mid distance, there's the shaft going up. So same leverage either side. I need 90 degrees there, so if I channel out here, I've got two chisels, this is my smallest chewed up one, and I've got a real tiny one that's got a scoop on the inside there. So I'm figuring, I've no idea, I'm not a woodworker, but that scoop there must be used for digging out like this. Just really want to get a channel. I think I might use a hammer on this. Got a small one here, should be okay. That's better. Wow. 
Well, I've got a tube of this Gorilla Glue. Sounds cool to me. I'm going to put some of this in there as well, just to set the base of it. Seal up the base a little bit and also hold the handle in position, the wood handle. And then come back tomorrow and see what I can do whipping over the top, I feel. I've got a nice snug fit there, so I'm going to take that out. It's so cold out there. I don't even know if this glue is going to come out, to be honest. In fact, let's get some, let's get some brute force on it, people. Get some pliers on it. Ooh, that's it, that should squeeze it. And this is a sort of, I find this is like an expanding type glue. It's more just to hold it in position. And then the whipping will take care of the rest. Let's just sort of bed it in. There we go. I feel that's more than enough. I think I could probably put a covering of this glue over the top of that. If it will come out. Just down that edge. All one of GP's experiments. Well you can see that's nicely sealed up there. And hopefully that's set for the morning. Back indoors. And we'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> okay, all finished guys. Back the next morning. Really pleased. That Gorilla Glue there is absolutely set rock solid as you can see. So the metal's pinched in the wood anyway and I've got it all sealed up, it's definitely taken. I've no need to whip around there. The wood, I've sanded down and I've put some linseed or boiled linseed oil on it because Mike tells me the standard linseed oil uh, can be you know, quite tacky, quite sticky. So this is boiled linseed oil and it's all been painted in high sea drifter yellow. So there we go guys, there is a sea fishing disgorger for big fish, handmade handcrafted, made or even bodged in Britain. I've really enjoyed that.